Okay. Hello guys, my name is Gela and I'm former world champion of the game. I'm probably the best player that ever touched the game. I'll be teaching you how to become good at the game and everything you need to know. Uh, we'll be going through these points. Attacks, knowledge about the game, mindset, countering principles, attacking principles, countering combos, attacking combos, cage control, styles, adapting, crown game, and info I forgot. So, I'll start with the attacks. Before I start, I need to tell you about velocity and what it is. I'll be mentioning it a lot. So basically, velocity is a uh, speed of your attacks and it's very important because the faster your attacks are, the more damage you do and the more critical strikes you do. Critical strikes are important because you get 60 points and those 60 points over time become a big advantage. So, how we get good velocity? When the opponent comes in front of you and starts attacking, he develops a certain speed of attacks. And when you start attacking too, your velocity adds up. So combined, you do much more damage than, uh, let's say, if your opponent didn't attack at all. Next, I'll be going through attacks and which ones are useful. So, let's get into the game. So, every arrow represents an attack. So let's say left arrow is a left hand. And every arrow has three attacks. One coming backwards, which you do with A. And you do A with left arrow you do backwards attack. Neutral, which means just pressing the arrow, which is left hook. And with D, coming forward, you do lunging left hook. So the left hand has spinning back kick, spinning back fist, neutral left hook and lunging left hook. Down arrow is a right leg, backwards, you do spinning back kick, high kick, and push kick. Right arrow is backwards, uppercut, straight right, and overhand right. Up arrow is a, a left high kick, low kick, and up kick. Which ones are good? So, I think the best attack in the game is a high kick because I show you in the game it's very long, so you keep safe while throwing it. It has very good velocity and it's very hard to counter because you're so far away. Uh, and it develops really good velocity because it's a good kick. Then, I think neutral left hook is the best attack you can throw uh, close range because if you kick too close, your attack won't do a lot of damage and you can get uh, countered with another shot that's gonna be better. So let's say if I kick and my opponent throws a left hook I probably will get knocked down, so it's not good. You want to use attacks that are at supposed to range. So at this range, I'll probably throw a head kick because it's it's a long range attack, and if he throws a shorter attack, he's not gonna hit me. But if I'm closer, I want to use closer attacks. Then. I need to read off the paper, so wait a little bit. So, 
those are the S tier attacks with the push kick too, because push kick uh, alone is not a good attack, but you can mix up a lot of great attacks with it. For instance, I can throw push kick and mix it into head kick. So I cancel the attack. So I, for instance, now I'm too far, but if I throw push kick and head kick, I come close and with the velocity that combo creates, I create more velocity, therefore more damage and more points for me. And I also get into range. So it's a really, really good attack. You can also throw left hook after it, which also gets you into the closer range because left hook is not close enough. But it's really good attack, but it's not uh, very rangey. Okay. Then we have A tier, which are low kick, spinning kick, back kick, and up kick. Why these? Uh, and I think also straight right and overhand right. So low kick is a great attack. But if you notice, if I leave only leg kick, my left hand is in the air. And with the high kick, my opponent can counter me after I leave my kick alone. So basically, you don't want to uh, end your attacks with a low kick because it can get really countered. It's really good if you use push kick and cancel it into something else because then you have a great low kick but without the opportunity to counter it because another attacks uh, are coming because there's a timing, you know. If I leave the head kick at the on end position I get the uh, low kick, but the loading afterwards takes about half a second. So the, it's not good because you can get counted. Okay, it's good, but it's not perfect. I prefer the head kick more because it's it can be really countered, uh, maybe with attacks that are close enough if you make mistakes being close. Then, spinning back kick. This is a great attack, but on itself, it's not really good. It doesn't do a lot of damage, and if your opponent PBs you, you cannot throw attack for like two seconds, which is horrible. You can get really countered badly. So don't use it when you're close enough. You wanna get the distance. It's good because you can uh, mix it up, for instance, into low kick, which only adds about uh, the velocity, you know. And you can mix it up into left hook, which also adds the velocity because you keep spinning and developing more speed. You can also mix it up into other attacks, but be careful when using spinning back kick and head kick afterwards because if you do it uh, in the wrong time input you can get kicked over okay i cannot do it right now <laughs> then we have up kick up kick is only good when the opponent is at the ground you don't use it on the base combat when the opponent is at the ground you want to throw up kick, but you cannot throw one attack at a time a lot of times because you don't, uh, the game works the way if you throw one attack a lot of times, it takes a lot of time but if you cancel it into, for, for, for example, let's say left hook, you can cancel it and you can throw it a lot faster this is the difference it's a big difference so we, you want to cancel it into left hook. Up kick is really good when the opponent is at the ground. Because not only you can kick the opponent when it's going down, you can kick him while it's going upwards at the, at the very start. 
but you have to be really close to hit something. Most opponents don't really expect you to hit them on the way up. So it's really unexpected unexpected attack. But you, it's really hard to pull off and but when you practice it it's it's basically free HP from the opponent. Then we got straight right. Straight right on itself. It's again not really good attack because it's short and doesn't do a lot of damage. If I hit my opponent, it does basically nothing. But if you miss your attack and hit the opponent afterwards, you get another chance to not get countered when the opponent starts an attack. Because you miss, but the straight right is so fast, it can cancel the opponent's, uh, the opponent's attack. Most of the attacks work this way. If you hit your opponent when he starts an attack, it cancels them their attack and you can keep going, but they get cancelled and they cannot attack you. I usually hit it after my head kick. Even if I hit my head kick, I do it afterwards. Because if I hit my opponent and he doesn't PB, I can still get another hit in. And if I miss him, I can still get another hit in. And he, if he PBs, I can just back off. So it's basically free attack. Again, next one. Overhand right. Overhand right is really good at certain situations and really bad <laughs> at certain situations. You don't want to use it at long range. Because it's really easy to counter. If I throw overhand, as you can see, my head dips into the kick. So if my opponent kicks me when I'm down, he gets a basically free counter. And because the attack takes that long time to load up, I cannot basically do anything else. I'm, I'm stuck in this motion and my opponent has a lot of time to counter me also as my head dips into the left i create velocity towards his head kick so it does a lot of damage if the opponent counters you but if you get close enough with a push kick or something or the opponent starts attacking and i'm into the range and if he kicks me I can knock him down, I can do a lot of damage. The overhand right probably makes the most damage on itself in the game. It doesn't do a lot of critical strikes, that's bad. But you only use it when you're close enough to hit him and he cannot back off into countering range, which would be something like this, because then I get countered. But if I get too close, he cannot do anything, he can PB me. Yes, but if he doesn't PB me, he's gonna get a lot of HP down and I get a really good hit. And it's really good at knocking down people and dealing enough damage. It's really good when the opponent has a low HP because, for example, if I throw any other attack and my opponent is at 15 HP, I'll probably won't kill him if I even if I do really good counter. I won't. But if I throw really good counter overhand, I'll kill him. Then, the next one. B tier, which are a little worse. I think the uppercut is B tier because, yes, it's good into mixing it up with left hook. It's really only showy combo. It doesn't really work. Some people use it when they're close. And it might be good, but what I've seen I counter a lot of people doing this combo because uh, if I PB their left hook <laughs> if I PB their left hook PB their left hook the next attack is still coming but I cannot block because he PB'd me. The PB'ing works the way that 
if your opponent BBs your attack, you have like a half a second, even if you don't have attack going, where the opponent can hit you and you cannot block. It's made into the game. And then we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. And it's really useful. Spinning back fist is on C tier. It's this attack. It's really slow. It doesn't do uh, a lot of damage. It, it's probably like one of the worst attacks. Because it's really slow. It doesn't do a lot of damage. It can get really countered. But it's, you, don't, you just don't want to use it. Other than when the opponent is getting up. Because it's really good at mixing the times. For instance, a left hook is really fast. But the left uh, the spinning back fist is really slow. So if you mix slow attacks and fast attacks, you can get some attacks in when the opponent is getting up. You, you, just, you can mix them up and the opponent maybe cannot expect to PB you. Because the timing is very different. But it's only good for this reason. The D tier are attacks you should never use, which is left high kick and left long hook. This one, because it usually doesn't hit your opponent for some reason. And for other one, when you're at the highest, it takes a really long time to get into the starting position. It takes a, like a half a second after the kick is at the attacking range. So you don't want to use it because you get countered when you're turning. And it's also bad because usually you want to switch the sides you're attacking at the attacking combos. For instance, I use right kick and then I use less left low kick because I change sides. Uh, most attacks don't really work good when you use same sides. For instance, uh, overhand right and uppercut. They just don't load good. For instance, you want to change the attacks. Let's say I use spinning back kick and the left hook. They, they go well with each other because you spin the same way with the spinning back kick and with the low kick. So you add up speed. But when you're doing this and then you go into something else, you just fuck up your whole speed. It just goes to zero. Then... Well, long left hook. It's not really good because it doesn't have a lot of load up. It's slow. You can get countered. And it looks rangy. But it's really not. And, and it doesn't work well. I cannot really explain to you why it doesn't work so well. But it's slow. You can get countered. And it doesn't do a lot of damage when you hit. It doesn't basically do anything. So... I would advise you to not use it at all. Some attacks are better than others. So when you use more of the attacks that work and less of them that don't work, you become essentially better by doing nothing. Okay, these are the attacks. Let me check my paper. Okay, next one is knowledge. First, I have types of block. You can block normally, but if your opponent hits you, it saps your uh, block, uh, block timer. You cannot block afterwards again. And if the opponent keeps attacking, after some time, you'll stop blocking at all. And it becomes essentially useless. You don't want to use this type of block ever. Some people block the way they time the attacks. So for instance, one attack comes and the opponent and you time the attack. But this is actually worse than spamming the button because uh, the block has a time window which you can block. I don't know the exam exact numbers, but it's really low time 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 scale i think so but if you spam 
the attack goes. If you block you and you spam, you cover the timings. So you become essentially you block the whole attack instance. It's better. You should use it. But you don't want to use it a lot because if you spam too much, you get block spam, which takes a lot of fucking points and you don't want to lose a lot of fucking points. <laughs> uh, basically, I use about like four or five uh, spa space clicks. After that, if you, if you miss, you want to just hold it at and time the next attack because because you don't want to get block spam but you can still use it but you have to be very careful you can spam like five five times next attack goes you can block it normally usually you can get away with a lot of block spamming i don't really get any block spams anymore because i'm good so you can learn, definitely. Level of players you should play. I think the majority of the opponents you face should be slightly worse than you. Some people say you should play better people. But if you play someone that is too good, for instance, they destroy you, you don't really learn anything because in every aspect you get destroyed and you don't learn anything because you don't have any good chances to do little mistakes or little corrections or try any new things you just don't have time to do it the opponents that are a little bit worse than you are the opponents you can definitely beat and you can try new things but they are still little difficult to defeat so it's a little difficult. So you have to try. It's not really easy. You shouldn't play players that are, for instance, level 10. Because, let's say, the opponent that is level 10, it's really easy to beat with anything. You can do a lot of mistakes. You want to have someone who can punish you for your mistakes, but not destroy you. So, let's say, I fight players that are above level 50 because I'm really good and I can beat all of them but I still have to try I, I cannot use anything to uh, to beat them maybe some of them I can but most not we are in the octagon you should use this map as much as you can why if you're looking to get into pro league because how do you expect to be good at the pro league with the pro league map with the pro league rules right while you're playing at the basic lobby where the opponent can run they can do anything that you can get attacked with a lot of sides it's just not good you need to practice what you what what you want to become good at so if you fight in the octagon you become good at the octagon you want to become good at the octagon because not a lot of players play octagon so you, so you can get advantage for instance like use the cage so you should play this map and with this rule set because if you ch change the rule set your playstyle changes a little bit too because you want to win and if the points work differently then you have to adapt next after you end your combo and let's say you miss you do something you want to pb immediately afterwards why well the opponent can obviously counter you and i see this as a mistake of a lot of people you need to trail this into your head so you play miss you want to pb and get out of the fucking range get out of the range a lot of people, when you stop your combo, the opponents will start to go after you. You can use this to your advantage. I'll get into this in the countering principles. Then. The combos should 
not be too long. Why? For instance, I if I use five or six attacks, my opponent can't get out of range, get out of range, and he can perfectly position himself to counter me. And if he's really good, he's gonna catch me. While you're attacking, you cannot position yourself in any way other than getting closer with your attacks, for instance, a push kick, some, something like that. And you cannot block, because when you attack, you cannot block. That means you're fucked if your opponent can counter you. So we want to use like three or four attacks. If the opponent PBs you, you get out of range. And this is really important. Get out of the fucking range. If the opponent PBs you, can, you cannot attack, and he can attack you. You can do and wait for, for your PB, but it's really not that useful. You want to get out of range, so the opponent cannot have any chance to hit you anyway. You don't want to uh, take chances with PBs, even if you're really good at it. So, I'll show you some examples of attacking after you PB the opponent, but maybe in a little bit, because I'm at the wrong point. Uh, if you're wobbling, let's say you're wobbling, you're falling, your opponents hit you, you can regain your stability with an attack, uh, left hook or the uppercut. If you're, if you're really like stumbling and you know you're gonna fall, you can throw an uppercut and you can regain your balance. It's really good, but you wanna use it out of range. Why? Because your opponent can obviously counter you when you use your uh, uppercut. You don't wanna use kicks because if you're stumbling and you throw a kick, you basically do a backflip and it's not useful. The uppercuts is, are good because it sets you into a good position, and the position is not much different from just standing. It's not really changed. So let's, let's, if you can see, the left hook is just your body turning like a little bit. But if you throw like a disc kick, you change the position a lot, and you don't get into the basic position, you can fall. Then, the number 41 the former world champion, I think, did teach me one lesson. You should never chase the finish. If the opponent has low HP, you will eventually kill him. You don't have to chase him. If you chase somebody too much and they play perfectly, they can counter you, they can kill you because they got low HP bonus, you don't want to chase people. They are already low HP, that it takes one good hit and you can kill them. So don't chase the finish, you'll probably get finished off. Then, you need to try to be unpredictable. Because every attack you do, and everything you do in the game has a counter to it. For instance, low kick is really good if your opponent starts attacking and you hit him. It's really good. You can kick him, you can you can do anything. But low kick can get countered with high kick after you leave the kick up too long. And you can get spun around and everything. The right hand is really good in the range, but if you're, if you're off the range and the opponent counters you, <laughs> if the opponent counters you, you get kicked and it's over. So every attack has a counter to it. So you want to be unpredictable. If I fought and did only push kick into head kick, my opponent knows I'm going to throw push kick into head kick. And you can counter it really easily if the opponent PBs you and that then starts attacking. Or he waits until you stop attacking and hits you with something. So it has counter. Everything has counter. Then 
what you need to make sure of, you change the attacks a lot. You need to add weapons to your arsenal, and you need to change them a lot. And what's good about this is when the opponent doesn't expect your attacks, you can really exploit uh, everything in your style. For instance, if my opponent knows what I'm gonna do, he can counter it. But if he doesn't know, he'll probably do a mistake or do something bad you can exploit, you know. Then, you wanna switch the playstyles. Basically, 99% of the players use the same fucking playstyle if they're full HP and low HP. This is bollocks. You wanna change the playstyles. Why? For the reason that I told before. If the opponent expects something, he can counter you. But if you change your styles and your arsenal and your attacks that you're using, you become unpredictable and you can win. Why you want to change playstyles? It's obvious. But when to use uh, playstyles? You can change playstyles basically when the when the when the current playstyle that you use doesn't work, or you your low HP. When I am under 15 HP or 15 HP, I'll become defensive. I'll counter more because my counter works better because I have the low HP advantage. When I'm low HP, I do more damage. And even if I do the attack that is not correct for the situation, it becomes better. If your attacks do more damage, then even incorrect attacks can uh, knock your opponent down, for instance. Or they can do more damage. It's basically advantage. You don't want to die when you're 15 HP. You need to hold to the advantage for the longest time you can. For basically obvious reasons. So I become really defensive and I prioritize 90% countering when you're full HP you wanna go full on because you don't need the HP if you're staying at the 15 HP mark then it doesn't matter if you had uh, 100 HP 5 minutes ago or 50 minutes ago it doesn't fucking matter so you wanna use the HP while you can tank some shots After you PB your opponent, you want to start attacking because your opponent cannot block you for like a half a second after you PB. So there's your little time window you gotta use. Even if you don't hit it, then you can use your attacks to attack the opponent and the opponent cannot attack you for not only the extended time he cannot block, but also for the time he cannot attack. Because I, if I PB him, he cannot throw another attack for like two seconds, let's say. It just doesn't use. It, it doesn't work. So it's really good to attack because you're, there is your free opp opportunity to attack don't get countered and get maybe some points for yourself so you need to use it if you pb something you need to fucking attack with everything you have and then when your opponent regains the possibility of attacking you you can back off you can do something else but this you need to use it's it's very important because you can build up a lot of points Uh, you should never touch the cage. Why? Let my friend show you. The cage basically slows your attack down and manipulates it into the way that it's not correct. You don't want to touch the cage, for instance. I'll show on myself. Because you keep spinning around, 
your attacks become bas basically useless and you don't have the possibility of doing anything. So never touch the cage. You can be close to it, like I am right now. It doesn't matter that I'm close to the cage. I'm, I'm still capable of throwing every attack. But if I touch the cage, it man man manipulates my attacks and I cannot do anything and my opponent can tee off of me and I become basically a punching bag. Okay, let's talk about... Wait, I'll show you some instances in my fight. In my fight with Numa, I recorded some instances of of the attacks, of the things I use. So you can see it and use it for yourself the same way. So, 0 040. Here, I P beat my opponent's attack. And after that, I throw uh, an attack of myself. Let's see. And I hit it. Another instance is uh, 128. Where I PB'd him and he couldn't block me at this instance, so I get a free critical damage. And it took shit ton of his HP too. Another one is 203. Where I got another critical strikes because of this. And with this all added up, I basically gained 200 points for nothing. I basically did nothing special. 803. Here I use the same thing. So I added up a lot of points. Then you can use clinch breaks when your opponent is really aggressive or when you know it's, he's gonna use a kick. When you clinch break and your opponent uses a kick, it knocks him down. Like a funny instance here at 413. Basically hilarious. <laughs> and another one at 712 which I want to explain too so after you clinch break you can attack your opponent and you have the advantage of having the attack first if you clinch you can attack first if your opponent clinches you, he has the first attack. So you need to be first with the clinch. And if he is first with the clinch, you want to clinch him right back. Let's see here. I clinched him and I started the cat attacking and he was too late. So I gained a little spo uh, point advantage here. So I think this is all about the knowledge. Let's talk about the mindset. When you're use, uh, losing, you will probably get frustrated. But you want to avoid this at all times. You don't want to get frustrated because you cannot think clearly. This game is not about being tough or fast or, or anything else. You need to think clearly and use correct, correct things at correct situations. So... My tips are be calm, don't use any emotion, don't feel any emotion, try to remove them. Then, you need to be focused, you don't want to have music on, uh, playing something bullshit and thinking about songs. You need to focus on the game and nothing else. You have to be confident, you need to believe you can beat your opponent even if it seems impossible. Because the confidence uh, gets you going through the motions. If you're afraid of your opponent and you want attack, you will get your fucking shit kicked. You don't want to get fucking 
beaten because you were not confident enough. You need to be confident in every situation, even if you don't have any chance of winning. That's important. You need to admit your mistakes because everybody makes mistakes and you can learn of them because if you remove basically every mistake that you have, you become really good even if you don't do anything good if you don't do anything bad, you become good because there's nothing to counter. And you need to find your mistakes. You need to get time to finding your mistakes and don't use the things that don't work. You need to ask better players what you should do and what you shouldn't do. This may be really bad if you ask the wrong person, but Usually the person that beats you knows what you're doing wrong because they know how they counter you. Probably 90% won't tell you and tell you some bullshit reasons. But some tell you the real reason you can think about and fix. You want to practice specific combos and everything specific. If your defense sucks, you ain't gonna get so good with the attacking that the defense will not be important. You need to fix the things you're doing wrong. So if your defense sucks, train defense. Use few days just to train defense. If your attacking sucks, you need to train your attacks and use nothing else for the day. Or use mostly it. If you don't do something, you don't become good at it. You need to practice it and don't expect it's gonna take like five minutes to learn because it's not. It's gonna take days, maybe weeks, maybe months to fix some of your biggest issues. But after you fix them, you become basically invincible. Then we have countering principles. You want to counter the way, move a little bit backwards and try, throw a lunging left hook and right overhand and spam it. So if he uses this attack, I can time in between his attacks to counter him. So this was wrong. And I can counter him. You basically want to hit your opponent at the start of their attacks. Because every attack has a loading phase. You don't have to attack no more. So every attack has a loading phase. Let's say my overhand works in the middle of its attack. We got a starting load up, hit and then going back towards to starting position. The only good position of the attacks is the middle. Is the part where your hand touches the opponent and kicks him. And does the damage, basically. But at the start, it doesn't do anything. It's almost, if I were too close, it doesn't do anything. It only, it only does at the part at the middle. So you want to hit your opponent when they end their one attack and start another one. This is little difficult at start, but this is basically what you want to do at every counter, because if people throw like, for instance, 10 attacks at the end of overhand and starting the left hand, you can kick them at the start of the left hand, let's say, or the right hand. And that's the load up phase where it doesn't do anything. And it kicks your opponent off. <laughs> uh, and you get kicked. But you need to use the proper timing. You just cannot uh, throw a head kick into something. And it's just, just, you need to time it. So beware 
of the timing of the attacks. Almost every person does use the same uh, timing. So let's say one, two, one, two, one, two. And in between you want to hit them. Not when they got their attack going, only when the attack is starting. Because they cannot attack you at the, uh, at the this phase of the attack. That's really important. And basically you can counter any attack with a head kick if you use this uh, proper timing. Because every star uh, attacks start basically the same and they all have the loading phase where the where the attack does nothing but you can counter them and when you counter someone and they got an attack going they cannot block you they cannot do anything so next dashing is very good when you use it to pay the opponent but only going backwards it usually doesn't work forwards so if i go into the range and i dash backwards my opponent thinks i'm gonna start attacking him right here but i'm not gonna attack him right here so he's gonna attack the same way so if i go here and i dash backwards I can dash out of range and my opponent got combo going so I can counter him. It's, it's only bait and it's all, uh, it's really good because it gets your uh, uh, character moving backwards so your head is out of the way but your legs are in the position so you can, so you, can you can go a little closer with your attacks because the opponent misses your head but your legs are in the position and when you cancel the dash with the head kick it snaps you right back into the position it's really good for countering it's really good you wanna use this counter most of the time because the head kick is the best attack in the game it is longest it is with the good damage and it almost doesn't get countered at all. Then what do we do? Sometimes it's good to just stand your ground when the opponent starts attacking from a long way. So let's say if I'm here and I start attacking, I am my opponent. And my opponent stands their crown, they can counter me when I get into the attacking range in between the attacks. It's difficult, but when I use this, I use low kick because low kick is good countering attack, not really good for the attacking because if the opponent BBs you, it's a long way till you can attack again. It's one of those attacks. I can counter them and it's good because it's also long range, it does a lot of critical strikes and most of the attacks don't hit your leg. So you can counter the opponents and hit them at the leg for instance and they don't hit you because the leg is uh, down. What's the next? If you want to counter, you don't want to counter with a with like a knee when you use a head kick because it doesn't do a lot of damage. The attack does the most damage at the tip of its attack. You see, I just kicked him and I did critical strike. I couldn't do critical strike if I were too close because it doesn't load up too well. It doesn't make a lot of speed and also you you want to use the most range because if you can hit them with the attack and they cannot hit you because you're far away using the longest attack you get basically three hits next oh i have also instance where i use this 731 at 
this instance, I missed my head kick. But also, it doesn't mean I'm fucked. If I use my head kick and it's uh, out of range and not little out of range, I can repeat the head kick because my opponent probably sees that I missed and he wants to attack me. So he's going to attack, probably. So you can counter him going forwards because you know he's going to attack. So you can expect him to attack. So you can throw another head kick. I'll show you again at the full. Here you go. Then, we got, we got attacking principles. So, you want to use three or four attacks at max. If you are in the range, you can basically attack until you get PB'd. And then you got you have to get out of range. This, this is what you do. You attack the opponent, PB's you, you get out of the fucking range. But most of the times you hit for like instance three or four attacks and the opponent get uh, backs up and he's out of your range, he's in the countering range, and you cannot block, you cannot do anything because you're 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 throwing an attack you cannot block. So eight oh three I show you what you can use so if you miss. So basically, I got two out of range by being out of range, my, my opponent wants to counter me, but I can counter his counter because I'm also out of the fucking range because I stopped my attacks early so I didn't get uh, countered at the fifth or sixth attack. Then he throws a kick. An overhand, but I counter him because I expected him to counter me, and I am out of range. Then seven seventeen. If you get hit when you do your combo, you usually fall, but you can cancel the falling as I said with the uppercut or left hook. And if you are in the range, the attack works well. So I'll show you here. Here, Nama hit me with with the left hook, but I kept attacking with the left hook, so I didn't fall. And he fell because he didn't block and he didn't use any other attacks that would make him stand in the place. Then, countering combos. As I said, you want to use the dash backwards into the head kick as much as you can when you counter. This is your number one thing you want to use when you're countering. Number one. But you also have a uh, push kick cancelled into left hook. If you don't use this, you need to add this to your arsenal because it's really good. I'll show you. One minute exactly. My opponent starts attacking, but he is out of range. So therefore, I am in the position I can attack and counter. I use push kick in between the attacks. I use a left hook and it gets him knocked down. 333. I use the same thing. It's really good if you're uh, circling the cage because your opponent thinks you're vulnerable because you're at the cage. but. It's not much difference if you are not touching the cage and if you are at the middle of the octagon. It, it's no difference. But the opponent thinks it's a difference, so he will attack you because he thinks you're vulnerable. 
so you can use your attacks if he thinks you're vulnerable and you're not. So you're, you're circling and you can use the push kick into left hook and hit him before hits, he hits you. You can use this after he uses some attacks in between, like the other counters. Or you can use this at the start. But you have to make sure to hit him. Because if you don't hit him, I'll show you what happens. This is 442. If you miss, you are free to get countered. Unfortunately for him, he did not m hit me. So I used the same combo and I hit him. And it works really well because it gets a lot of fucking velocity and the left hook is really good if you are, are in the range and you can get into the range with the push kick. So use this one, but don't use it when you're far away because you get countered and this attack can be really countered because left hook is not long attack. If you miss by, by a little bit, you get hit. Then we got 049. And this is where I use my head kick, but not with dash. My opponent is attacking me, but he's out of the range. He kicks, but he misses but I can kick his hand, as you can see here. And I hit him, I use the straight right afterwards, always, if, uh, if I missed. And I got critical strike for this. I think... I need to wait a little bit. When you're attacking, you don't want to be too out of range, of course. You don't want to use too much attacks because the opponent can position himself and counter, of course. And you don't want to get too much into the sides. I'll show you in the game. If you're using this and attacking afterwards, your attack is not straight. It's from the line and this affects you in the way that your attack doesn't have the longest range. It is off the side. And I cannot really explain to you why, because you get, you get far away when you circle and you, when you start attacking also, it becomes really easy to notice you attack. If you do this and then you cancel your attack, the opponent immediately knows you're attacking because you change uh, big time directions but if you go backwards and start attacking it's it's less less likely to be noticed by your opponent so therefore it's good because it's more unpredictable so you don't want to do a lot of s or w when you're looking to attack not counter then when you attack your opponent, you attack him and he PBs you. Probably he PBs you. PB means perfect block. Perfect, perfect block, of course. So, if he PBs you, you need to get out of the range. Because if you're at the range and he PBs me, PBs my attack, and I'm in the range, I cannot attack for, the, for some time. So he can hit me, but I cannot hit him. So why would I stay at the range? You need to get the fuck off. Usually the range you want to stay in is two head kicks. I, I use this one because if you cannot hit your head kick, he cannot hit his head kick too. But if, if he does like a head kick and something afterwards, he still cannot hit me, but I can counter his second shot afterwards. So, you want to stay far away, so the opponent cannot hit you. 
but you can hit him if he does the next attack. But he's also far away. For instance, I cannot hit him now. But if he throw attack, I can hit him. So I need to stay away just a little bit so he cannot hit me bef uh, before he starts attacking. When he attacks, I can counter him. But before that, if he starts attacking I, and I decide to not attack, then I can just get away and he does nothing, basically. I'm too far. And I, if I decide to counter, then I can, I can hit him if I'm at the correct range. Then. My attacks work two ways. I can attack him and look to hit him. So I can use, let's say, push kick into head kick. And this attack is supposed to hit him. But some attacks are not supposed to hit them, just bait them to attack. So the attack counters them, if that makes sense. So if, for instance, push kick into head kick, I try to hit him. But when uh, at the other attack, for example, my favorite one, is push kick into leg kick, then you do spinning back kick into the left hook or low kick. So it looks like this. Or if you are not in the range for the left hook, let's say, I was in the range. If I'm not at the range, you don't use this use leg kick because leg kick can hit him basically and this looks like you're attacking and you are attacking but you're not looking to get him in the range you're getting him to counter you but you're gonna counter him with a better shot so if my opponent starts attacking into my combo I can I can hit him and I can counter him if he doesn't I'll just back off you know and I cannot get counter because I'm out of range but if he, if he starts attacking I got my combo going and I hit him at his loading phase so we, uh, the his attacks are basically useless so let me show instances of this. 2.30. I use push kick into leg kick. I miss that, but the spinning back kick hits him, but my head is out of the range, so his attack doesn't hit me. And I hit left hook because I thought uh, I was in the range and he the spinning back kick wouldn't kick him down. Next. Spinning back kick counter 634. You see, I missed the three attacks before that. I missed them. But I missed them on purpose just to get him into the range so I can counter with one of these shots. Next one is oh, 738. Okay, that was a different one. 848 I use this one and it gets him with the left hook also because he was too close okay that was all for this combo let's head into another combo if I don't use this combo which is not really attacking but countering combo but also both. I want to use head kicks 
as my first attack because it's really long, it does a lot of damage, and it's hard to, hard to counter. And if I hit him, I make damage and I disrupt his shots. So I can keep my combo going. If I don't hit him, he cannot counter me because the shot is too good. If I don't hit, I'll use probably a push kick to get into the range. And I'll use the head kick again. So let's see. You see? I missed, but I got into range with the, another attack. The good one is using the head kick. Using the head kick. And after this, I use the straight right. Because if I miss, I disrupt his shots and I can com uh, combo. I can basically go on with my combo. So if I miss, I can I can go straight right and I can continue with my combos. Most of the time you want to use your head kicks. And start attacking afterwards. But you want to use head kicks a lot uh, in your combo. You don't want to use a lot of spinning and something else when you got your combo going. Okay, so I use my head kick, I'll usually do head kick and I do push kick afterwards because I can hit the head kick, get into range with the push kick and I can hit him with the left hook next. And if I'm in the range and they start their attacks, my left hook becomes basically a counter to their attack. So basically every attack that I do is meant to counter their attacks. It's not meant to attack them uh, in the first hit. I just want to get my opponent to start attacking so I can, I can counter his shots with my attacks. It's, it's all about this. You get a lot of velocity with this. Then, so you, you want to use a lot of head kicks into push kicks. And let's say, head kick, push kick, head kick. Head kick, push kick, left hook. Uh, head kick, push kick, low kick. Low kicks are really good when, the, when you know your opponent is gonna start attacking. And when you are countering. It's really good when you know they're gonna attack. When they're looking to PB, you'll usually know when they're looking to PB. When... They only wait for you and they block your shots. You go and they wait. They block your shots. And if they do this a lot, they're not looking to counter you. So you don't want to use a uh, leg kick because you cannot attack for a long time and they counter you after they PB. So use it only when your opponent is really aggressive and when they want to counter you at the range. Then it's really good. So a lot of head kicks, a lot of push kicks, a lot of left hooks. Then, uh, if you love overhand right, like some certain people in the cage with me, then uh, you can use my modified combo that I created. It's it's basically head kick into the overhand right and the head kick again. And you basically do the same motion. It's not good when the opponent wants to counter you because they will counter your overhand. You cannot uh, do anything with it. But it's good when your opponent is against the gauge and they are just too close to counter. I think it's three, three feet five, yes. So I use head kick, uh, head kick, overhand, head kick, overhand, because they cover each other. When I hit my head kick and the head kick stops and gets backwards, I would hit with my overhand. And when my overhand 
stops, I hit my head kick again. So you basically do a continuous attack. And when your opponents will not counter you, this, this is one of the best combos. But usually it's not good because your opponents will counter you somehow. Then, what we got? These are some examples of me attacking. 654. So push kick into leg kick. Really good because my opponent started attacking me and not and not PBing me. So I hit him when he started his attack and it was basically useless for him. But I got my shot going. Basically I disrupted my fall with this one. 919. So you see, I hit a head kick into left hook, then push kick, and another left hook, I think. So I countered his attack at the start, again. 10-12. Head kick, a straight right, and again head kick. You wanna use a lot of head kicks because they are good. Then again, 10, 20, which becomes really close. This was head kick into push kick and again head kick. See, most of percentage of the attacks that I use are head kicks. You want to use the most of them. You don't want to use useless attacks. You want to use the best attacks, the most you can. Next one, cage control. When my opponent gets to the cage, close to the cage, I don't want to be at his range because it basically becomes trading. I can hit him and he can hit me. And I can lose this trade. If he gets backwards again and he starts attacking and I'm out of range, I should have hit him. I can hit him. So you'll want to be uh, far enough so he cannot hit you but you can hit him and this is all cage control you I don't need to pressure him so close that there's like a dog fight I don't need to do that I create pressure by just being close to him and him being back to the cage it's just mental pressure it's not different if it was uh, at the back of the cage or uh, in the middle you know, but if you hit him and he's uh, close to the cage, this is when the overhands become really good. Why? Because you can hit him and he cannot run out of range. Your overhands become really good because he cannot get into the range he can counter. He can try to counter, but your overhands become too good. And he cannot run backwards forever. And if he changes the angle and he starts going around you, he just has a lower range. So your attacks become quite useful. So you can hit him with the overhand when you're close and there's not much he can do. So this is how you pressure someone and and use your attacks this way. When you have your low HP and the opponent is running after you, you wanna circle the cage because you wanna get too far and you can regain your HP. So if, for instance, if you got uh, five HP, you can just run away uh, run away from him and wait for 15 HP. He cannot do anything. He needs to get into range. And he, if he gets too close, you can counter him and punish him for it. But until then, 
you can you can run away till you got your HP going and then you can start attacking again. But do not attack when your HP is too low because uh, one mistake and you become dead and you don't have your 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 low HP uh, advantage. You want to use cage when you're low HP to bait your opponent because he thinks I'm threatened and he will attack me because I'm at the cage but I'm not threatened I can just run away the cage basically doesn't exist if I change my angle so it's really good to use when my opponent thinks I'm vulnerable but I can counter him no worries you know that styles sometimes the opponent has a style that is better than yours for instance you keep attacking him but the opponent just keeps countering you you don't want to keep uh, attacking and getting countered it's basically nonsense what you want to do is basically turn your style around completely you don't want to change it a little bit if you keep attacking and he keeps countering you just want to completely spin and just counter why because the opponent that's really good at countering probably is not good at the at the attacking all the people have their strengths and their weaknesses so you want to turn the whole thing upside down so you had the advantage because you use their weakness and if they don't attack what do you do what do you do you just wait You'll run, and, and they'll start attacking eventually. You can wait a minute, you have time. You don't have time if the, if the opponent keeps countering you, you get um, into much worse position, so you just don't want to do the same fucking thing over and over and over again. So you got to change styles. So I use countering style, which is basically blocking and getting out of range and countering. That's what I use when I am at 15 HP or lower. I want to uh, keep myself alive for the longest I can because I can get the most points that way. Then. <sighs> then, 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 well, then. When that doesn't work and my opponent uses certain attacks that I cannot counter or just I just can't, can't counter him. And I, he keeps hitting me and I, I just cannot use this style. I'll change my style completely. If I cannot counter, I will go all in and start attacking my opponent. Because he will not expect it. I can pressure him. I can attack him. I'll, I'll just change style completely. You want to change styles when your style doesn't work. You can use countering style, you can go all in, or you can, or you can change it uh, the way that you attack, but you don't really attack, you just you are waiting for your opponents to start attacking. This looks like I'm, I'm, I'm attacking, but I'm really not attacking, I'm just waiting to counter him with the shot. Then, for some people, it works. When you get in the range and wait for him to attack you and wait for your PB and just tee off for some people. It, this usually doesn't work but some people are just too weighty so you want to pressure them and wait for them to attack you first. If, if they just want to counter you they will throw their counter shot and you can PB them and attack them. But after the changes of PB, it becomes not really so good because they get more points for the attack than you get for your PB. So they got 15 points for attack and you got 10 points for PB. So if this doesn't work, you're basically using, uh, losing 5 points every, every situation. Then, this is for the styles, adapting. So basically, this is kind, kind of the same topic I told about. So you want to change your styles when your, uh, when your style doesn't work. You want to have styles 
that you can switch to. You don't want to use the same style. You, if you are all attacking or all countering, you want to have a second style that, that is opposite that you can use if your style doesn't work. Because styles makes fight. You can beat some people that are really good with your style and just beat them easily. But if you use different style, that would whoop your ass. So you have to have style that works for everyone. And if it doesn't work, you want to change it. Ground game. So for the ground game, I have a theory. You can go and attack your opponent when he's on the ground like, like an idiot. But mostly it doesn't work. They just PB. So what I use, I use three or four attacks out of range. And the attack that hits them is the attack that gets me into the range. You want to change the timing a lot. So for instance, if my opponent, let's let's just assume my opponent is at the ground and is getting up. It's basically, we cannot do that. I'll uh, just, just, just assume. Okay, I'll, I'll try to get him in the ground. So when you want to use slow attack and maybe fast attack that doesn't seem like that's the, your next move. So let's say he is supposedly at the ground and don't go. Uh, supposedly at the ground, I can use this and it's out of range and then I can use the attack that gets me into the range and then I attack. It's good because the opponent doesn't expect it and it's basically a free hit because he cannot counter you when he is getting up. So it's free hits. Mostly you don't want to keep spamming the hits and he just PBs you because you get no advantage by that. You might want to try attacks out of range, something like this, and then get into the range, something hits him. So attacks out of range and then something off of uh, of the timing, so different timing. So let's say slow attack and then fast attack, or high attack, out of range, and then low attack from other direction. You want to try to be unpredictable. It doesn't matter if you use made up nonsense combos because they cannot counter you. So you can use basically anything, and then hit them with a good attack. It doesn't matter what you use, just make it unpredictable, so they cannot read it. Okay, I got instances of this, 448. I use a lot of attacks that are, that are out of range, and then I get into the range when he doesn't expect me to attack. Then. 723. This doesn't work a lot of times, but it doesn't have to work all the time. If you hit him once or twice, you get basically three critical strikes which are adding up. So let's say out of range, out of range, and then something hits him on the range. And then 853. out of range, slow attacks, and then I stopped and throw and straight right. Okay, info I forgot. <laughs> I'm not sure if I didn't mention something. I think this is it. I, I think I did go over everything that is effective, that you need to do, what you don't need to do. So basically, that's about it. See ya.